Okay, so the math dealer here, and today I am going to do my best to try to break down how in the heck can you graph quadratics given any of the three forms. All right, so hopefully you are sitting in Algebra 2 and you've heard about vertex form, stand for, standard form, and intercept form. Okay, so I'm hoping, I'm hoping, because this, this lesson is definitely under the assumption that you are working in these three forms. Okay, if not, that's all right, still watch it. Maybe it'll make some sense. Okay, so here we go, vertex form. So vertex form basically has H and K in the setup, all right? So that's the key thing there, all right? So I have an H and a K and an A. In order to figure out like all the vert, how to find the vertex, the x-intercepts, the y-intercepts, and so forth, you, you have to know this format first, okay? And then there's a few things that you definitely want to consider, all right? So for starters, your vertex is going to be straight up the H and K, okay? So for example, and I'm going to try to walk an example through parallel to this thing, okay? So I'm going to be like X minus, let's say minus 3 squared, okay? And let's just say this is plus 6, okay? So my vertex in this case is going to be 3 comma 6. And like I always said, remember it's X minus H. So whatever that H is, I'm taking its opposite. Okay. All right, cool. Now, next step, you have to identify the axis of symmetry. Okay. So the axis of symmetry will always be X equals H. Remember the axis of symmetry is just a fold line that actually will go directly through the vertex point. So whether the parabola opens up or down or even sideways for that matter. Okay. Of course it wouldn't be a function, but those, those dotted lines represent the fold line, and it's a vertical line directly through the vertex. So it's a vertical line directly through the vertex, and it will always be the h-coordinate, right? Because the h stands for the x-coordinate. So my axis of symmetry, and I make a big deal about this, you have to write it as x equals, don't just tell me three. I'll be like, what, three frogs jumping on a fence? I don't know, right? Good. Okay. Next thing we always go and look for are the y-intercepts, okay? The y-intercepts, no matter what equation, no matter what equation you have, always to find a y-intercept, set x equal to zero. So to do that in the one we have up there, it's zero minus three squared plus six. So check it out. Now, remember, order of operations, you've seen it. Negative three squared gives me nine. So put a nine here. Don't put a negative nine. And this gives me negative 18 plus 6, which lo and behold is negative 12. So my y-intercept in this case is negative 12. Okay. Domain, I'm kind of a big stickler about domain and range when I teach um, these um, quadratics. So my domain, fun fact, domain of any quadratic function, whether it's opening up or down, is always going to be all reals. It can be written in set notation or I should say interval notation, negative infinity to positive infinity. The range, however, okay, the range is all about this A guy, okay? If A is positive, then the range is going to be from K to infinity. If A is negative, the range is negative infinity up to K. Because just think about it. If my parabola is opening up like it is up here, okay, the lowest value here is my K. So my range would have to be everything above K. If my parabola is opening down, okay, my highest value is K. So my range would have to be everything below K. So look at the example I have up here. My A is negative two. So since A is less than zero, okay, my range, remember it's the K, not, not the y-intercept, it's the K. Well, the K in this case is six, so it's negative infinity up to six. I know I'm crammed in there a little bit, but I am trying to kind of keep this all on one board here. Okay, now to find the x-intercepts, okay? To find the x-intercepts when you're having it in this format, basically you're just going to isolate the x. And there's lots of ways to do it, but the easiest way to do it is set the y equal to zero like you will always do whenever you're trying to find an x-intercept, okay? And then shimmy shimmy work work, right? Subtract the six from both sides. Right, negative 6 equals negative 2, x minus 3 squared, dividing by negative 2. I know I'm going fast, but I feel like I'm talking to um, strong Algebra 2 students, which is awesome. Might be Algebra 1 students, I don't know, right? And then I have to undo a square. Well, to undo a square, you have to square root, right? 
And don't don't be rude. Always remember, you got to bring in the plus and minus. Whenever you bring in a square root, you need to bring in a plus and minus. Otherwise, that's just rude. And if you don't believe me, go and watch another video. I have a few of them posted. All right, so these guys are my x-intercepts. Okay, so that's usually all of the properties that I ask for when I'm trying to um, figure out graphing quadratics. And then you can sketch the graph, plot the vertex, and then go through that. Okay, next form, standard form. All right, the standard form. Okay, I'm going to try to slide this over and focus here. Okay, so standard form. If you have to pause the video, guys, go ahead. It's all right. I'm not going to cry. I get AX squared plus BX plus C. That's standard form. Now here, your H is negative B over 2A. And I actually have a video posted um, where you can see why it works like this. And your K is 4AC minus B squared over 4A. Okay, so for example, like I said, let me put an example over here. If I have y is equal to, let's just say x squared, sorry about that, minus 6x uh, plus 7. Okay, um, nah, I don't want to use 7. Sorry, let's use plus 5. Okay, so if I have x squared minus 6x plus 5, my h, which would be negative b over 2a, so it's 6 over 2, which is 3. So my h in this case is 3. Now to find the k, I can simply just plug it in, all right? And so my k would be 4 times my a times my c. God, I'm sloppy. Sorry about that, people. All right? Minus my b squared. So negative 6 squared is 36 over 4 times a, right? And when you do all this work, you get negative 16 over 4, which is negative 4. So now my vertex here is 3 comma negative 4. And that's really huge. Like you've got to be able to find your vertex. Okay. Now to find everything else, it's just straight on through, right? Axis symmetry is always x equals h. In this case, my h is 3. Okay. Domain. I said that on the last side, right? Domain's all real. So range. Check it out. Your a is 1. So since a is greater than um, 0, the range is going to be from negative 4 to infinity. Because if A is positive, your range is from K and up. Okay? All right. Now, to find the y-intercept, we've always said x equal to 0. Fun fact. When you set x equal to 0 in this guy, you just get the C, right? Because 0 squared, 6 times 0 plus 5. So you literally are just left with 5. I know, right? Woo, so exciting. And then last but not least, to find the x-intercepts, okay, if possible, factor. In this particular one, you can factor, which was kind of nice of me. That's why I changed it to five. But um, if you couldn't factor, then you would just run the quadratic formula. And remember, if you get imaginary numbers, so if you're doing a little shimmy shimmy work work and you end up getting imaginary numbers, that means you don't have any x-intercepts, which can happen, right? If the vertex sits above the x-axis and opens um, up, or if it sits below the x-axis and opens down, right? So in other words, like if I have a parabola like this and it looks like that, well, it doesn't have any x-intercepts. It's not hitting the x-axis. And then likewise, if it was below opening down. Okay. Whew. God, I'm going fast. Okay. Please pause the video. Rewind it if you have to. Do something clever. Okay. Now the last one, intercept form. And this is the one that a lot of teachers actually don't talk about too much, but it's actually not as bad as it looks. So intercept form is y is equal to a, x minus r1, x minus r2. Okay. Where r1 and r2 are roots. Okay. They are roots to the quadratic. And I want to stress that. Okay, so that means they, they can be x-intercepts, but we also know imaginary roots can play a role too. Okay, but for our purposes, we're going we're gonna to keep them real. Okay, so define the vertex, all right? So the vertex you have to find by h. Well, the way you do that is take r1 plus r2 over 2. In other words, take the average of the roots. Okay, so this is basically average of the roots. And the reason why you do that is because, remember, you're going to have an R1 and an R2, wherever they are. I mean, they can be anywhere. They can both be on the same axis. It doesn't matter. Your axis symmetry has to be right smack in the middle. Well, the only way you find the middle of two things is you find the average. I'll say that again. The way you find the middle of two things, find its average. Okay. And then, of course, to find K, you're basically going to substitute the H you found 
back in for x. So substitute h in for x and solve for y. Okay, so what do I mean by all that? Well, of course, wait a minute, let me do an example. I know, right? Crazy fun, you math dealer. Okay, so I have x plus 5. That's a negative out there, by the way. Negative x plus 5, and let's say I have x, I don't know, minus 7 for all I care. Okay, good. All right, so first thing you want to do with this is find the x-intercepts first. So this is kind of different, right? So in this case, you're going to find x-intercepts first. So my x-intercepts, I always set y equal to 0, which we have always done from the beginning, people. So when I set it equal to 0, I'm going to solve. And I get x equal to a negative 5, and then x also equal to 7, right? So my x-intercepts are negative 5 and 7. Well, to find the h, I take the average of my two x-intercepts. And that gives me 2 over 2, which is 1. So h is 1. Well, now take the 1 plug it back in for my x, and then I get the solve for my k. So y is equal to negative 1 plus 5, 1 minus 7. Yep, you see it happening. So I get negative 6 here. That's going to be negative of a 6 here, and then negative 6 there. So I get 36. So then your vertex ends up being, yeah, crazy, right? But my vertex ends up being, where's, what color am I in, right? 1 comma 36. Okay, cool. All right. And then, of course, like I said, x-intercepts, y-intercepts, axis symmetry, everything's still the same. Like, you still go through and find it all. The fun fact is, is we've already found the x-intercepts. That's what you have to find first when you're solving, not solving, when you're trying to figure out the properties of graphing a quadratic, okay? The other one that does throw people for a loop is the range, okay? So, again, notice your a is negative 1. So since a is less than 0, your range is going to be from negative infinity up to 36. All right, I know this was fast and all that craziness, but I hope this kind of sums up some of the steps that you have to follow in order to find um, properties of quadratics. All right? Okay, so this is the math dealer signing out. See y'all!